efficiency by volume, is that it? A numbers game, like you say. Control costs and maximize profits. What is it that they say? Time is money. This review is brought to you by Audible. So Lightning Returns is out this week, and it's kind of a weird game in that it's like a sequel to a sequel to Final Fantasy XIII, but we also found that it's very much its own sort of game. So yeah, with that said, here's our review. From here on in, I go it alone. What happens next is the savior's job. In a lot of ways, Lightning Returns is the sequel that none of us wanted, but to be fair, it's also kind of quite a departure from the first two Final Fantasy XIII games. There's actually such a huge emphasis on talking to NPCs and following the game's rigid day-night cycle that at times it almost feels more like Majora's Mask or Shenmue than a Final Fantasy product. Ultimately though, we found that this is a Final Fantasy game through and through, right down to the chocobos and moogles. Where Final Fantasy XIII 2 set a precedent for Lightning as this sort of warrior at the end of the world, Lightning Returns reassigns her as a savior to a world whose days are literally numbered. God, yes, actual God, wants a do-over with the universe and has assigned Lightning as an ambassador to prep these survivors' souls for the next life. She does this by pursuing quests and taking on tasks for people in need. Basically, she's part open-world errand girl, part tooth fairy, and overall kind of just a pink-haired Jesus for the people of Nova Chrysalia. Fisher of darkness, bringer of light, redeemer of souls. She'd come at the end of day. Some of the main goals and a lot of the side quests in Lightning Returns are tied to the game's day-night cycle, since apparently it wouldn't be fun if you could just talk to anyone whenever you wanted. Whether you're advancing the story or helping out NPCs with their emotional baggage, the game's challenge lies in making the most of your very tight schedule. God's Doomsday Clock starts out with just seven days, but if you're efficient and productive enough, you can extend it to a much more generous 13 days. So the more Aradia I can collect, the bigger that tree will grow. And the bigger the tree, the longer the world has before Doomsday. Lightning's journey is mostly a solitary one, but really she's a party of three people. The Schemata system allows you to have up to three active ensembles, which is the game's term for outfits, each of which have their own strengths and weaknesses. These outfits are, for the most part, pretty tasteful and elegant, and we found it refreshing getting to spend more time admiring the costume design than being grossed out by it. Essentially, the schemata system means your clothes are your party members, and just like any successful JRPG party, diversity is absolutely key. In Lightning's case, it's making sure that there are a variety of actions and abilities spread across the three costumes. As a JRPG without a leveling system, all the upgrades in Lightning Returns come from elsewhere, so places like quest rewards, loot drops, and actual stores. It's worthwhile and actually pretty rewarding to put in the time to tweaking schemata combinations and assigning new enhancements to the various outfits. Changing outfits in battle is as simple as just tapping one of the shoulder buttons. While it takes only a couple seconds to deplete each bar, it also doesn't take long for the bar to replenish. It quickly becomes clear that the ideal gameplay flow involves rotating from outfit to outfit, letting one costume's meter recharge while Lightning is making moves in another outfit. There's actually a pretty great rush when you're constantly changing gear to suit the situation and adapting to the moveset of each individual costume. That said, we would have preferred slightly larger bars so we'd get a better indicator of how many moves we had left. Having to constantly move our eyes back and forth between these pixel-thin bars at the bottom of the screen and the action in the game felt tiresome at times. Time to mix it up. One of the very few gameplay features that hasn't changed since the first Final Fantasy XIII is the Stagger system. If you're unfamiliar with this trilogy, staggering is basically a method of finding a foe's vulnerability through trial and error, and then focusing on that weak point until the enemy breaks, at which point they become way more susceptible to losing HP than usual. By replacing Final Fantasy XIII and XIII-2's very divisive paradigm system with this new schemata thing, identifying weaknesses is a much easier and more clear-cut process. It's also one of the reasons why you technically don't need to play the two prior games to enjoy Lightning Returns. Not only does Lightning Returns impose a very strict constraint on your time, it also imposes a constraint on your resources. In Final Fantasy XIII, your health was instantly replenished after each and every battle. In Lightning Returns, you're back to healing the old-fashioned way, with items. Gone are the days of having 99 potions and 99 phoenix downs too. Now you only have six spaces to hold recovery items at any given time, which changes the way you think about combat significantly. So you really are. Our lightning. If you're the type of person who loves JRPGs for the townsfolk and talking to every single character in the hopes of learning something useful, you're in luck, because two of the four worlds in Lightning Returns are literally just giant towns. These towns are large enough to feature hostile dragons in alleyways and smaller enemies all throughout the map, and it's actually not all that different from the self-contained worlds you might have seen in Final Fantasy XIII 2. It's just that this time around, there's fewer of them, 
and they're a little bit larger. When exploring and conversing, you get the feeling that Lightning Returns isn't really meant to be viewed up close. Compared to the detail of Lightning's character model, many NPCs and cutscenes look downright blocky, like PS2 blocky. If Square Enix had difficulty rendering all these townsfolk at any given time, it definitely shows, and the contrast between your character model and the character models of the NPCs can feel super jarring. It's almost as if Square Enix recognized this and tried to make up for the mediocre production values by making the battles as flashy as possible, almost to the game's detriment. If the spells weren't so useful, you actually might not want to use them. There are so many lighting and particle effects, like bloom lights and flares, that sometimes it's hard to just even see what the enemy's doing. Still, for as much as this initially looked like another unnecessary sequel cash-in, we kind of have to admit that Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII does deserve credit for not simply retreading the gameplay of its predecessors. Its narrative connection to the first game is flimsy at best, but just like XIII 2, the standalone presentation works to the game's benefit here. The game's imposition of limited time does honestly provide a decent challenge, and it makes for a rare Final Fantasy that'll probably be pretty ripe for some crazy speedruns down the line. While not required playing for fans of JRPGs, it's a totally serviceable game and a more than decent stopgap while we wait for Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, then I shouldn't have waited, should I? Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII gets a 3 out of 5. Hey, want to support Rev3 Games? Go check out Audible. Audible has over 100,000 audiobooks and spoken word entertainment in every genre that can be played back anywhere, anytime. You can get a free audiobook when you go to audiblepodcast.com slash rev3games, and best of all, every sign-up helps support the show. So yeah, uh, that's what we thought. It's a really, really good-looking game in some ways, and a kind of ugly game in some others, but it's, it's a weird one. It's an interesting one. Um, let us know what you thought in the comments below, and yeah, thanks for watching.